Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you. <coughs> Let's come before the Lord. Lord, we thank you for this day and we thank you for your love and your grace and your care. And Father God, we give you the glory and praise today. Father, as we look at your word today, we pray that you would encourage us and help us to walk your way and to serve you. And Father, I pray that those who do not know you today might be born again. And I pray, Lord, that you bless this word for your glory. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay, if you'd like to turn to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Uh, just to say that um, one or two folk have contacted me uh, on the channel uh, concerning my uh, lecture on the resurrection and have given a few thoughts on that. So thank you for that, especially the individual who sent me a private message and, and gave me some arguments against my position. So I really appreciate that. And in a couple of weeks' time, um, I'll, I'll make... Uh, a video response from a couple of videos to that individual or anybody else who actually gives me a critique of anything that I say. So thank you for those who've taken the time to uh, critique whatever I've said. So I appreciate that. It has gone. It has been noted, and I, I will um, <clears throat> excuse me. I will uh, respond to you uh, in an honest way uh, later on in a few weeks' time. So I'll try and remind me so I don't forget. Uh, John chapter 3. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, but no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, You must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell where it cometh and whether it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do not know, and testify that we have seen, and you receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man have ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have eternal life, everlasting life. So that's uh, what we're looking at today, is you must be born again. A lot of people today, uh, young people will say, well, I don't have to think about Christianity because what I can do is I can just go on holiday, I can go out with my girlfriend or boyfriend and do all the things I want to do as a young person. And then when I've done all those things in years to come, when I'm much older, I can consider following Jesus. That's a very dangerous position to take. While you're young, it's important to find your maker and to trust him. We turn to Matthew chapter 13 verse 45. 
Matthew 13:45. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. So, the Lord describes himself as a pearl. And if you knew where there was a pearl today, on a beach somewhere, and you knew there was a pearl there, but you didn't know exactly where it was. You'd be down there looking for it straight away. But Christ is the great pearl. You know, there are some massive pearls that you can, can uh, that exist, that are worth millions. But Christ is the greatest pearl of all. And he's precious. He's worth everything. So... If you don't take him seriously, if you don't consider that he's that important, you're going to miss the main thing. He is the pearl of great price. And Nicodemus knew this. Nicodemus knew that Jesus Christ was the pearl of great price. Nicodemus was a Pharisee. He was a religious man. He was well known in his day as a great religious leader and he came to see Jesus at night and he came because he knew that Jesus was the pearl of great price John chapter 3 verse 1 Uh, John chapter 3 verse 1 there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus a ruler of the Jews the first thing is Nicodemus was religious he was a man who knew the Old Testament inside and out he was religious but yet he he knew that his religion wasn't good enough he knew that he had to come and see Jesus Religion will not get you into the kingdom. Saying you're a Baptist, a Methodist, an Anglican, a Catholic, a Muslim, a Jew, a Hindu, a Sikh, whatever, that's not going to save you. Saying you're a good religious person or you do Reiki or you do whatever, the occult tarot cards or whatever, religion, whatever type it is, is not going to save you. It didn't save Nicodemus and it won't save you. Matthew 15:7. Matthew 15 7 you hypocrite well did Isaiah's prophecy you saying people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips but their heart is far from me but in vain they do worship me teaching doctrines and commandments of men the Lord called out the religious and said they're hypocrites and we can be hypocrites if we say we're following a religion is it coming from the heart or are we just doing things outwardly? Nicodemus had an outward religion that was not from the heart and he knew that he needed something deeper. It's no good saying I'm a Baptist, Methodist, Anglican, Catholic, whatever. Do you know God in your heart? Philippians chapter 3 verse 4 and 7. Philippians chapter 3 verse 4 and 7 Though I might also have confidence in the flesh if any other man thinketh that he have wherein he might trust in flesh I more circumcised on the eighth day of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin a Hebrew of Hebrews as touching the law of Pharisee concerning zeal 
persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Paul was a Pharisee. He was a man learned in the Pharisee religion, and yet he said, I counted all loss but for Christ. It's not Baptist, being a Baptist or an Anglican or a Catholic or going to church or going to mosque or, or whatever. What matters is, do you know Christ? Are you trusting in him? Religion will not save you. Christ will. Secondly, Nicodemus was seeking John chapter 3 verse 2. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles thou doest, except God be with him. Nicodemus was seeking God. He was seeking him, and he knew that Christ had the answer. He knew that Christ had the answer, and he was seeking. Are you a seeker? Hebrews 11.6 Hebrews 11.6 Now, before I read this, I meet many people on the streets and at many universities. And there are, are two types of people. There are people who are seeking and there are people who are not. Those who are seeking genuinely want to discuss and ask questions. They want to know about the Christian faith. Those who are not seeking just want to argue for the sake of argument. Are you a seeker? You'll never find God unless you're a seeker. Hebrews 11.6 But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You're never going to find God. You're never going to know God unless you diligently seek God. You know, there was a time years and years ago when I was seeking God. I was reading the history of Western philosophy. I was reading and studying, and I, I was really earnestly seeking. I wanted to know the truth. If you don't seek God, you're never going to find him. You're never, ever going to find him unless you're diligently seeking. You have to read the Bible. You have to study the Bible. You have to be open to God and allow him to speak to you or you're never ever going to find him. If you're stuck in your rationalism or in your skepticism and if you don't allow yourself to think and to search and to seek, then you're never going to find him. Those who are skeptical and paradoxical, paradox, uh, uh, so, sorry, those who are skeptical paradoxically make a prison for themselves because they're not seeking. Nicodemus was challenged, John chapter 3, verse 3 and 8. John 3, John chapter 3, verse 3 to 8. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, You must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? You must be born again.
the Greek word for born again means born from above. It's kind of like, here's a glass with some water in, and the water fills the glass. Your heart is like the glass, and the water is like the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit, when you are born again, born from above, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in your heart. The Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace. The Holy Spirit is God. And the moment you believe in Christ, you are born again. The Holy Spirit comes in your heart, fills it like water fills a, a glass. And you can drink more and more of God. And know God. And be refreshed of God. So the Greek word for born again means born from above. It means the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in you. Now this was a challenge to Nicodemus. All his life it, it, it depended on his rationality and he depended on his religion. But now God, it, Jesus is saying to him, you must be born again. You must have a radical change of heart. You must have a radical dynamic relationship with me, the living God. You must be born again, born of the Holy Spirit. Just as water comes into a glass, so the Holy Spirit comes into your heart. You must be born again. My friend, you will never ever know God unless you are born again. If you're a Muslim today, you can argue against me about as the Bible changed. You can make all the arguments that you want against the Trinity, but you must be born again. If you're not born again, you'll never know God. As an atheist, you might argue with me uh, for hours and hours about science and whether science contradicts Christianity or not, but you'll never find God unless you are born again. If you're an agnostic today and you are interested in talking about Christianity and philosophy as many agnostics are, you'll never know God until you are born again. You must be born again. If you're going to know God, you must be born again. You must be born again. There is no other way of knowing God unless you are born again. John chapter 1 verse 12 and 13 but as many as receive him to them gave he the power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name which were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of God they were born of God only God can give you a new heart only God can change your heart only God can give you love for him. You see, as a Muslim or, or as a religious person, you try to get to God by your own religion and rationality. By a, a, an atheist or a skeptic, you try to climb the ladder by rationality. But God can, cannot be climbed up to. He must come down to you. And the only way he can come down to you is if you're born again, as if until he puts his nature in you, you will not like him, you will not enjoy him. Until he puts the nature of the Holy Spirit within you, you will never know God. Until you as a Muslim are born again and the Spirit of God enters you, you will never ever be able to know God. You will be trapped in religious practice, in religious observance. And that goes for any religious person out there or any scientist or rationalist, you'll be trapped in your rationalism, closed in, unable to experience the liberty and knowledge of God because you do not have the nature of the Holy Spirit dwelling within you. And unless that is in you, you will never know God. You must be born again. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 10 and 15 1 Corinthians one Corinthians chapter 2 verse 10 and 15 
But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, ye the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak not in words, which man's wisdom teacheth. Here it is, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But with the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. In other words, the flesh gives birth to flesh, the spirit gives birth to spirit. You as a fleshly person, as an atheist, a skeptic, or a religious person, you are walking in the flesh, and flesh gives birth to flesh, so you can never know God. But the spirit gives birth to the spirit. The spirit helps us to know the knowledge of the spirit of God. So when you are born again of the Spirit of God, you can understand God. The Spirit of God is key to a knowledge of God. Ezekiel chapter 36, 25. Ezekiel 36. Ezekiel 36. 25, 27. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Here it is. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. I will take away the stony heart of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk my statues, and you shall keep my judgments and do that. You will never know God as a skeptic or an atheist until God puts his spirit within you and gives you a new heart. Until then you'll be hard-hearted. Until then you'll be doubting God. Until then you'll be skeptical. Until then you'll be an atheist. And you as a religious person can never know God until God gives you a new heart. Because your religion is become the main thing and it's not it is God and you cannot know God until you are born again you must be born again next Nicodemus was loved if we turn to John 316 John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Nicodemus was loved because the Lord told him that God loved him. And gave it and was going to give himself for him. Romans 5 8. God loves you, my friend, and he gave himself for you. He came to die on a cross for you. The Son of God. Romans 5 8. For God commendeth his love towards us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. John 15 13. Greater love of no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. Christ laid his life down on that cross for you, that you might live. When Christ died on the cross and shed his blood on the cross, he was taking your punishment, he was taking your judgment, so that you might live. That is the love of God for you today. 
And then Nicodemus was warned, John chapter 13, 18. John 13, 18. I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. He hath eaten bread with me, hath lifted up his heel against me. Sorry, John. John, John chapter 3, 18, sorry. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. If we do not believe, we are condemned. There is a judgment. We turn to Matthew 3, 7. Matthew 3 7 but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism he said unto them O generation of vipers who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come John the Baptist said there is a wrath to come Ephesians 5 5 For this you know that no homonger, homo nor unclean person, nor covetous, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. There is a wrath to come. Colossians chapter 3 verse 5 and 6. Colossians 3 verse 5 and 6 Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth fornication and cleanness in order and affection evil conspicuance and covetousness which is idolatry for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience the wrath of God is coming Nicodemus was warned about the wrath to come Now Nicodemus, when he heard this, in the end he did come to know God. If you turn to John chapter 19, verse 39. There came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night, and brought a mixture of mirth also, about a hundred pounds. So at the burial of Jesus, Nicodemus was there. So, what we've looked at is Nicodemus was a religious person and Jesus told him he needed to be born again, born from above. And we've looked at that Nicodemus was loved, that God was telling him that Jesus would die on the cross for his sin. And he was warned that if he didn't believe in Jesus he would be lost. The same goes for us, God loves us, he died for us, God wants us to be born again of the Holy Spirit. We turn to Titus chapter 3 verse 5. Titus chapter 3 verse 5. Not by works of righteousness lest we which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. I'll read that again. Titus 3 5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. He saved us by the washing of regeneration. That is another way of saying by being born again. Regeneration is the new birth, the Spirit of God coming into our hearts. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23. 1 Peter 1 23 when he was reviled sorry 
1 Peter 1 23 being born again not of corruptible seed but of incorruptible by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever you must be born again if you want to know God you need a new nature from God the Spirit of God to come and give you a new nature that's the only way it's not there's no way in the kingdom of heaven unless you are born again and the way to be born again is to confess your sin believe Christ died on a cross and ask Christ to come into your life by the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will come the Holy Spirit will give you a new heart and a new nature that's the only way to be born again and to know God without that we are lost without that we are not going anywhere but to judgment because we don't know the living God I'd ask you to consider to be born again today I'd ask you to ask the Lord that you might be born again let's close in prayer I'll be quiet for a minute for let, to let you pray and then I'll close in prayer Father God, uh, we come before you today and maybe the message has been a strange message for many and Father I pray that they would understand the need to be born again Lord we confess all our failure and sin today those who do not know you today come to you openly wanting to know you and they say Lord forgive us our sin we believe you died on the cross enter our lives by your Holy Spirit please make us born again Lord and so Lord we thank you that we can have this new birth we thank you that we can have a spiritual reality in our lives that we can know the living God as our Father Father we thank you in the name of Jesus we give you the praise and the glory and the honor and we thank you for all your goodness and all your love and Father I pray for each person who has heard this message today that you have blessed them and all the messages that have been done recently that you bless them for your glory may they bear fruit for eternity in your name Lord Amen Amen I hope that's been a blessing to you and God bless you today